um, ideas have come back to you. So you must not do it in sequence. The questions are almost always in order of difficulty, starting from the, uh, the least difficult to the most difficult. And the examiner is not there to trip you. So don't come with a... I, 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 I talked about uh, um, the mindset of the examiner in the... Um, Success, the secret of exam success video and explain what the examiner is looking for. Not necessarily the answer is you marking up the marking scheme with the desired answers. There are specific keywords you need to use if you're defining, explaining, or describing items like that. So you follow the pattern of the question and you see how the questions are asked and then you go back and revise. That means go over your notes. Not textbook, because textbook right now is a real waste of time. Not textbooks, but let's look at the more challenging uh, subjects that the students, uh, you know, struggle with statistically, mm. especially mathematics yeah. and uh, sciences. How best can they go about it, especially when they are still struggling with it? You don't read math. You solve problems. So get the answers. I, I, I've never understood when people say, oh, yeah, I'm reading this now. I, I want to understand this. In the case of math, nobody is going to ask you to define ratios or explain percentages. No. They're going to give you, we have two boys that got, went up the hill and we have five girls. What is the ratio of boys to girls that went up the hill? So you have to add two of them together and, and divide by a component of the other. So if you say you're doing any serious work in terms of revising for such challenging subjects, what you're doing is essentially looking at the past paper or end of chapter questions uh, quite useful because most of them are pulled out of past papers. So you look at end of chapter question and answer it. Don't answer it mentally. Write down your answer. And when you finish writing down your answer, give that paper to your friend, your peers, or your colleague, or your parent. They will mark it because they are a third party. They can pick up your errors quicker than you. Because you will gloss over it and be able to fill up the... the you had the idea in mind. You knew what you wanted to write. So you look at what you, did, what you wrote, and you may fill in the gaps. But somebody has to say, what do you mean by this? And lastly, uh, you mustn't, if you're a parent or a mother, you mustn't put a cross next to a question that's got wrong. Put a question mark, say, what is that? How can you explain that? So that encourages the student more, yes. not a cross. A cross demotivates you. Say, me, I don't know this. A question mark says, oh, I knew this far. Oh, I just got a little bit of that wrong, or I missed that step. So it encourages people. You need to be very positive. You need to say something good, lovely, calmly, whatever is a good report. That's what you should be thinking of. Don't, don't damage any confidence right now. Don't damage any confidence right now. That's it about exams and GCSE for those taking exams. Thank you so much, Dr. Chris. It's wonderful to have you, and we look forward to having you again. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Viewers, remember it is Brunch Education Talk. We are looking at topical issues on education throughout the country. If you've got any questions on the issues discussed today, you can send emails to brunch at loveoldtv.co.uk. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of our programs on Love All TV, Sky Channel 588.